Yes. And if you were in the United States Army at any time, would you please stand? And then, uh, <laughs> and remain standing, guys. And then Bob DeLong is here, and uh, Bob will come, and he will stand behind the chair representing the Marines. And then Del May will come, and Del is representing the Navy. And if you served in the Navy, please stand. And Chuck Reynolds will come, and he's representing the Air Force. And then finally, the Coast Guard, Arnie Anderson, is representing the Coast Guard. We have a special video to play uh, in your honor, and again, we thank all of you for your service uh, as you fought to preserve the rights and privileges that we have here in the United States of America. pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, <clears throat> Memorial Day didn't start or come into existence as a result of a declaration given by a president. Memorial Day started when John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, as they wrote the Gospels, gave us the word that another one had died in our place. That 2,000 years ago, there was one that went to the battle, did not shy away from fear or hurt or pain or 
even the ultimate sacrifice, death. So, Father, we thank you that you gave your son that not just today, but every day of our lives, we can remember the first one that laid down his life for a friend. And I thank you for the men and the women that stood across this auditorium, that they stepped into battle knowing that that, that could have very well been them. I thank you for the men on this stage because that empty chair just doesn't represent a branch of the military. But they can put a name there. One of their friends didn't make it home. And God, we honor you and we honor them and most importantly we ask in the name of Christ our Savior who set the example we ask that we would be willing ourselves to step into the battle each and every day before us and should it even mean that we give our lives for the sake of the kingdom we do Thank you for the men and women, not just overseas, but even in the security of our own country that are willing to do the same thing. Would their faithful lives be a motivation to us to live faithfully, not taking for granted the securities and the opportunities that their death represented for us? But we would seize the opportunities at hand and we would not waste a day until every person on the face of this planet knows there was another warrior and his name was Jesus. There was another death and it took place on a hill called Calvary. And there are others like us that need to tell the story of the one who died and paid the ultimate sacrifice. So don't just bring to mind those that died on a battlefield. Heaven help us if we forget that there was another battlefield called Calvary and one gave his life there. And would that occupy every waking moment every chance we get to talk. Father, would tomorrow be a day that each and every one of us in this room, maybe we thank a soldier that came home and, and God, would you bring it to my mind that I wouldn't just thank that soldier that came home, but I will let that soldier know I want to pray for you today because I know there's someone in your life that gave the ultimate sacrifice. Would we all be found faithful in simply just doing that? Thank you for giving us a church. Thank you for giving us freedom that we can proclaim the ultimate life offered, and that is Jesus. We thank you, and we pray that you would rain down for the rest of this service the Spirit of God. I ask that our lives would never be the same as a result of what the Spirit wants to do today. And I ask that in the blessed name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ, and all of God's children said. Okay, half of you said it. Let's try that again. All of God's children said. <laughs>